Hi, one hour smart home here, and today we're going to show you how to use your EcoB3 Lite smart thermostat. So to use this smart thermostat, what you've got is a touch screen that's right in the middle here. And the first thing that you see is this temperature right in the center, 71 degrees. That is the current temperature inside of our house. Now, if we want to adjust the temperature, that's what we have set over here. So right now the heat is set to 63 degrees, which means my heat will pop on when this temperature gets down to 63. So if we want to make an adjustment to the temperature, all we're going to do is go ahead, hold and press, and then we can scroll up or down and we can raise or lower this temperature as much as we want. So I'll just set it to 65 for now. Now let's say that we want to adjust from heating to cooling or heating and cooling automatically. What we're going to do up here is press the little fire symbol and it may be a fire symbol or a snowflake symbol, but those symbols are interactive and allow you to change between heating, cooling, or auto, which will automatically turn on heating or cooling based on the current temperature and set it to either one. Now you can also set it to off and if you do that, the thermostat won't do anything. So once again, down here, you can see that there is a little drop and it says 35%. That is the current humidity measurement inside of your house. So you've got the temperature of the house right here. You've got the setting for the HVAC system, which is 65 and we've got 36% for our humidity and we're currently in heat mode. Now down here at the bottom, you've got some other symbols and we can interact with those. So let's click on the first one here that is the cloud. And what this is, is the current weather report for your location, as long as you put in the correct address and zip code when you were setting up the Ecobee. So it says it's gonna be 38, it tells you the humidity, and then we get the extended forecast here. So I'm just gonna scroll down and now we're out of the weather. Now let's go ahead and click on the settings over here where that gear icon is. Here we can make some quick changes. We can use the home or away mode. So if we have an away temperature, if we were to press the away for now, it's going to go down to that away temperature on the thermostat, which is usually a larger range that's designed to save you energy. Or if I wanted to, I could click home for now because I am home and going to be home for the foreseeable future right now. So I could just leave it on that. Now down here, it says fan in auto. So currently the fan will turn on whenever the HVAC system is on. But I could also go over here and turn the fan to on. And then that's just going to circulate air with the fan, regardless if my HVAC heating or cooling is on. So I'm gonna go and turn that back to auto because I don't want that to be circulated currently. But if you have uneven heating and cooling in your house, turning that fan on to continually circulate air is a good way to help out with uneven heating and cooling because it's just gonna distribute the air throughout your house a little bit better. Now let's go ahead and click down here in the other settings or menu item. And we have the most settings and menus that we can change right here. So let's go to the top one and look at settings. This just says HVAC, we've got it set to heat. If I wanted to change it, I could click here, but we could also do that from the main screen like we showed you earlier. Now, right here, you've also got the fan and you can run the fan for a certain number of minutes each hour. So I could choose to run the fan for five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes each hour, if I didn't want it to be constantly on with that other setting. So I could have it a half hour, or I could even have it 55 minutes per hour. So play around with this. If you're having uneven heating and cooling, you might need to run it every 15 minutes per hour or all the time. It really just depends on your home, but that is a nice feature there. Now let's go ahead and look at the next tab, sensors. Now, if you have an Ecobee sensor set up like the room sensors or they even have window and door sensors, these are gonna show up here and you can see the current status of those. So I don't have anything currently connected with the Ecobee 3's thermostat, so I'm just gonna move on to the next one. Now let's go down here to the schedule. Now here in the schedule tab, we have a couple different settings and you can see up here at the top, we've got different days. Now I can change the schedule for different days just by clicking on a different day. So right now I'm on Friday, I could go to Saturday or Sunday or Monday and just go through any one of these days that I wanna make an adjustment to. Now understanding the Ecobee scheduling sometimes can be a little bit confusing, but I've got three settings currently, sleep, home, and sleep. 
Now, what this means is that while I'm asleep, my set point is 60 to 4 degrees for heating and 82 degrees for cooling. Then at 6.30 a.m., it has a home setting where the temperature will rise to 68 degrees heating, and if it was air conditioning mode, it would go down to 78. Then again at 9.30 p.m., it goes back into sleep mode from 64 degrees heating and 82 degrees cooling. So let's imagine first that it's just winter time and all we've got is heating going on. At night, it means while I'm sleeping, it's gonna be 64 degrees and during the day, it's going to be 68 degrees. And the sleep set point is all the way from 9.30 p.m. till 6.30 a.m. in the morning. Now, if I wanna change the time for any of these set points, I can do so by clicking on the actual set point. So instead of 6.30 a.m., if I wanna change this to 7.30 a.m., I can do so. Now, in order to change the temperatures here, we'll have to go into a different menu and change those. Now, let's say that I'm not at home, but I go to work at a certain time of day. What I'm gonna do is just add another set point in here and I can add in away. So let's put this in here. Let's say that we wake up at 6.30 a.m. I'm like we've already got, and then let's say we go to work at 8.30 a.m. And then let's say that we don't get back till later in the day. So right now it says the away temperature is 64 degrees to help save us some energy. And that will go on at 8.30 a.m. So at 6.30 a.m., the temperature goes up to 68. And then at 8.30 a.m., we've got the set point back down to 64 to save us energy while we're away. Now we're gonna get back from our job, let's say at 5 p.m., let's put another home set point in there and we're gonna put in 5 p.m. And now you can see the temperature goes back up to that 68 degrees at 5 p.m. So 6.30 a.m. goes up to 68. While we're away from home, it goes down to 64. And when we get back home, it goes back up to 68 degrees on the heating. Now you can see the cooling temperatures over here. And I set this up in the winter, so I really didn't pay much attention to these cooling temperatures but you should definitely adjust those for whatever your climate is. And I'll do that when it gets closer to a cooling season. Now, let's say I just wanted to copy this day and use this for every weekday. All I do is say copy Wednesday down here, and then I can select any of the other days that I want to have this on the same temperature set point. So I'm just gonna say all the weekdays and click save here. And now Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Monday are all the same schedule. So if you wanna change the schedule, what you're gonna do is click up here and you can add a set point, home or away or sleep. Now you can't add two home set points next to each other and two away set points for each other or two sleep set points next to each other. They all need to be one or the other or the next one. So they have to alternate between home, away or sleep. Those are the three modes. So you're either home, you're away or you're asleep. And you can change those though and kind of game it a little bit because if you wanted different temperatures, you could say that you were away while you were not away. And then you could say you were home again and that could change your temperatures throughout the day. So if you want to game the schedule a little bit, you can do that, but you can't have two home set points next to each other and two away set points next to each other. It has to go between the different types of comfort settings or different types of modes. So we're gonna go ahead and just click cancel here and let's go back to the main menu. We're just gonna click at the top up here. Now let's go ahead and click on those comfort settings. And those comfort settings are the settings that we just looked at in the schedule. So here is where we can go to change those. So I'm gonna go in here and we've got fan on auto on each of these, that's what I want. 68 is fine for my home temperature, but let's say I wanna move it up to 70 degrees. We'll just slide it up here and now we're at 70 degrees for our home temperature. And what I needed to adjust was the cooling. 78 is way too hot in the summertime. Let's go ahead, we're gonna put this down at 72 here for when we're at home, and then we're just gonna go back. So now we've adjusted our home set point, and we can go back, save this, and now we can adjust those other set points. So when I'm away from my house, I do really wanna save some energy. So I'm gonna set this temperature for away, the heating even lower than 64 degrees. I'm gonna go ahead and set this all the way down to 60 degrees. Now, one thing you wanna be cognizant of is that you don't wanna set it too low where your pipes are gonna freeze if you live in an area that gets really cold. So just think about that before you set your away temperature really low. 
Now we're gonna go back and let's go ahead and change the cooling setting here. And we're gonna go from 82, I don't care if it gets really hot in here, I'm gonna put it all the way up to, let's say 90 degrees. So we're gonna go ahead and now our away temperature is adjusted and I just click save. Now, lastly, we can change the comfort setting for sleep. So let's go in there. And I kind of like where this is set. I like it at 64 degrees while I sleep, so I'm gonna leave that. But if we've got it up here at 82, that's way too hot for me while I'm sleeping. So I'm gonna change the air conditioning temperature and we're gonna put that down, uh, let's say 70 degrees, and then we're gonna leave that for our sleep temperature and click save. So that is where you adjust all those comfort setting temperatures that you use to schedule the thermostat in that scheduling menu. So let's go back and look at some of the other settings here. Now we've got different modes down below. Let's go ahead and click on the vacation. It says you have not created any current or future vacation events. Let's go ahead and click this to get started. Now what this does is allows you to set the temperatures even lower than you typically would if you were away or you were at home because you're gonna be gone for an extended period of time. That away function is really for if you're leaving for a daily activity, whether it be work or maybe you're going for a walk or you're gonna be gone all day, then you can go ahead and use that away function. But if you're gonna be gone for a week and you don't mind it getting really cold in your house or really hot, there's no reason to use that extra energy, you can then set how long that vacation mode is. So right now I could say I'm gonna depart right now and let's say I don't come back for a couple of days. I'm gonna be gone for let's say a week and I just put in that return date, the return time, and then it'll go back to my normal schedule. But during that time, the vacation settings, I'm gonna be saving more energy because I'm gonna be down to 56 degrees. So if I wanted to change this, I could go in here and I could change 56 degrees up and down. Let's put it back to 58 degrees. I don't want it super cold in here. And then you can have the cooling or heating on or off. So I don't want my cool to come on. I want the heat to be on. So that is the correct setting for what I've got now. And then you can select the fan run time. There's not much of a reason that you need that fan run time on unless you just want to circulate air so the air doesn't really get stale in your home if you're gone for a long time. So just a thought there with that fan setting. So we can go ahead and click save here if I wanted to save this, but I don't want to save this because I'm going to be here. I'm not going on vacation and I go ahead and click cancel. Then we go back and we are all set. Now let's go down and we're gonna click on reminders and alert. I don't have any reminders, but typically what's gonna show up here is if you've got an HVAC filter that you need to change, that's gonna show up there in the reminder and let you know it's time to change it. Now let's go in here and see what alerts I have. And if I click on alerts, it just says successfully paired with HomeKit. I've got a video that shows you how to set this up on HomeKit, actually how to set it up on Google or Alexa as well. So you can pair it with any of those three voice assistants. Just kind of a neat feature there. And let's go ahead and click on preferences. Now what we've got here is those preferences for HVAC maintenance, furnace filter, UV lamp, temperature alerts, and all these different alerts or notifications that you can have. So most of these settings you can alter and just choose a date and then it will be six months out. So if I wanted HVAC maintenance, I could click in here and then I can choose the frequency and the date of the last service. So if you have someone coming to your house and servicing your HVAC system, it's a good idea to make these changes and then just have a frequency every six months, 12 months. I prefer to use whenever you change heating or cooling, you should go ahead and change the air filters. Uh, really not too big of a deal there. So, so you can change around those maintenance intervals and be reminded of that. And then down below, you've got the furnace filter. It says every three months, last filter change, December 6th. It's gonna be based on pretty much whenever you set up your Ecobee thermostat, unless you change the setting while you were setting up this device. So let's go back again. Now, the next one is the UV lamp. I don't have a UV lamp, but UV lamps are usually used for sterilizing air inside your home. So it has a reminder there if you want, whenever you can change the UV lamp and you could put in able, and then you can click how often you wanna be reminded of your UV lamp reminder for replacement. A low temperature alert. So I'm gonna set this a little bit higher than 50 degrees. I'm gonna put this at 55 
because I live in Chicago and Chicago gets very cold and your pipes can definitely freeze even if it's 55 in your house when it's like negative 25 some winters when it gets really cold here. So we're gonna go ahead and click save and then we just click back and then I'll get a low temperature alert. It's gonna notify me on my phone and also on the device that it's low in here. So I can see if there's something wrong with my HVAC system and take action before it gets way too cold and the pipes freeze. You've got a high temperature alert also. If you've got pets, good idea to set that. You don't want those pets to get too hot. You've got a low humidity alert, uh, which is good if you live in an area with really low humidity so that your wood floors or cabinetry or doors don't dry out too much and you can cause issues there. Same thing with high humidity. Maybe you live in some place with high humidity. Humidity can sometimes cause issues with building materials. So. Then you go down below, it says display alerts on thermostats enabled. We want that, enable heating and cooling alerts. We want that, so we're all set there. And we're just gonna go ahead and click back now and then go ahead and click back again. Now, the next item we've got is settings and preferences and defaults. So we're gonna go ahead and scroll down to the menu item and click it. Now in the settings tab, we have different menu items. We can make adjustments to the date and time. This will automatically come up when you set up your Ecobee thermostat and then it should stay in there. Let's go ahead and click on preferences and we can look at different temperature display options. So you can do Fahrenheit or Celsius. You've got the heating range, the cooling range, the name of your device. So if you wanna change this, you go in here and you can change the name of your device. And you might wanna do that if you have more than one Ecobee thermostat or if you plan on using this with Alexa or Google Home, you wanna give it a unique name so that you can use a voice command to be able to control this Ecobee thermostat. So always a good idea there to go in and change the name if you plan on using voice commands with your Ecobee thermostat. You can change the screen brightness here the standby screen or the active screen. I'm just gonna leave these how they are. You can do a timer for how long the screen will remain active between standby and active mode. Now hold action. This is one that is good to check out. Now the hold action function is when you change the temperature but you've already got a schedule set. So it allows you to choose how long that temperature will be held. You can choose two hours, four hours, or until the next scheduled activity. So I like to leave it at the until next scheduled activity. So if I'm a little bit too hot or too cold during the day and I turn it up, then it's gonna automatically go back to that sleep setting at the scheduled time. But you could change it to until you change it, which means it's just gonna stay on whatever temperature that you put it to or decide at time of change. So a couple different options there for the hold actions. Now what we've got down here is the heating and cooling smart recovery. So let's go ahead and click on heating smart recovery. I've got this enabled. And what it says is if your desired temperature is scheduled to change from 65 to 70 degrees at 6 a.m., the smart recovery is enabled, your Ecobeat will automatically figure out when to start heating your home in order to reach the desired temperature. So what this does is turn on your HVAC system ahead of your scheduled temperature so that it will be that exact temperature at the time you have it scheduled for. So I like to click that to enable and just leave it there. So at exactly the time that I have those temperature set points for, the HVAC system will start up a little bit ahead of time to get to those temperatures. So let's go ahead and click back on that. And now cooling recovery, it's the exact same thing as heating recovery, but it's for the cooling system. So that's all we've got in this menu. Let's get out of here for preferences. Now below, we've just got the Wi-Fi network that we're connected to. All you do is go in there. If you need to make a change to your Wi-Fi network or password, you can do that in that setting. The installation settings, we can go in here and see what equipment that we've got installed. So we can look at our wiring, what kind of furnace or air conditioner I have. We have a one stage furnace and a one stage air conditioner. So here in the wiring tab, you can see what wires that you have installed. We've got an RC, a C, a W1, and the power extender kit installed for our HVAC system. And all we've got is a traditional furnace with an air conditioner. So we're gonna click out of that and we're gonna click out of this again. Now down below, we've got our thresholds. And what this allows you to do is really customize some of your settings. Now what we've got here in the threshold settings are some different adjustments we can make to our HVAC system. So we've got auto heat cool enabled. 
we're gonna leave that on, but you could disable it. And all that means is that you have to manually schedule between heating and cooling, and it won't automatically go between the two. So we've got it enabled to let it automatically go between the two, but you could disable that if you wanted to. What we've got here is a heat cool min delta, and that lets you only set the temperature five degrees or larger when you're setting heat and cool, so you're not heating and then cooling and wasting a whole bunch of energy heating up your house and then cooling it with your air conditioner or your heat pump. So kind of a nice feature there. Now we've got configure staging and that's for if you have a dual stage heating and cooling system, we don't have that. So I'm just gonna go past that because I can't make any adjustments there. It says compressor min cycle time off time. And this is just so that your compressor isn't going on and off and cycling all the time really rapidly. So it's set there for 300 seconds, which is a good time, but you could adjust that to even higher if you wanted to be a little bit safer. And then it says compressor minimum outdoor temperature, and it's not gonna let me turn on the compressor if it's below 35 degrees. And that's just to protect the compressor from damage when it's really cold out. You don't wanna have it turning on when it's freezing outside. The heat minimum time, that is the shortest duration that the heating will go on for. So we're gonna have it for a runtime for five minutes. Compressor, it's the same, a minimum runtime there, five minutes. And that's just so your system's not shutting down and turning back on and off and on and off a lot really quickly, trying to limit the amount of cycles that your HVAC system goes through. You have a temperature correction here and a humidity correction here. And the temperature correction would be for if you've got this in really bright sun, you can retard the temperature a couple degrees because the solar gain on this is gonna heat it up a little bit. So that's the purpose of that temperature correction there. And we can go back to our thresholds and we can also go down here and we can test our equipment. And what this is gonna do is it's just gonna go through testing, make sure your compressor runs, make sure your HVAC system runs, make sure the fan runs, make sure the furnace runs. So we're just gonna go ahead and click cancel because I know everything is properly working, so I don't need to do anything there. And then let's go ahead and look at access controls. If you wanna add a security code, let's say you've got this in a rental or you don't want your kids adjusting the temperature up and down a whole bunch, you can enable in security code and then enter a security code here. And then no one is going to be able to change those temperatures or range of temperatures without using that four digit access code. So we're gonna go ahead and cancel. We don't need to set any kind of settings on this. And then last but not least, you can reset this. If you wanna reset it all the way, you wanna disconnect it from HomeKit, or let's say you're moving out, really important that you reset this and that you don't have any personal information on here or that you make sure you don't have any kind of crazy schedule while the house is unoccupied. So we're just gonna go ahead and click back and now we are back to the home screen. So that is all we have for showing you how to use your Ecobee 3 Lite Smart Thermostat. Now, if you wanna see how to make all the adjustments that we made here on the thermostat manually, you wanna see how to do that from your phone, we're gonna have another video that shows you how to make those same adjustments or change your settings on the Ecobee 3 Lite thermostat from your phone. So thank you for watching this video. Please give us that thumbs up, subscribe, or click any links below if you wanna support us.